He'll be known as Barry. He says ridiculous news things all night. Like, he's all right into the COVID and the whole bit. It just quotes ridiculous things. And it's very positive that Trump is going to be the next president. Good luck with that. I don't think that's going to happen. All right. (laughs) So keep going. Do you have more? Or is that it? So, well, that's all I have for that. Um, Good, good. uh, But I do have some other big news, though. All right. Uh, Bob Dylan's entire song catalog is officially up for sale. Thank God. Or he's officially sold it. Now, they he they aren't releasing the... estate the, sold it. The estate sold it, sorry. Um, um, they haven't said the exact amount, but they do know that it's worth more than $200 million. That's crazy. So that's that that's going on. Which is you know, like, holy shit, that's crazy. Uh, last week, Stevie Nicks maybe with sold all that money stake in her. Maybe with all that money, yeah. um, uh, Jacob Dylan could buy another headlight, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he can rent himself another shitty record deal. <laughs> One headlight. Um, <laughs> I hate that fucking. Song. Um, uh, last week, Stevie Nicks sold the majority of stake of her songwriting uh, that valued at about a hundred million dollars. What? Go, she's Nicks. she's still kicking around, isn't she? She's not dead. Yeah, no, no, she's still alive. Why would she sell her shit? That's weird. Because she just wanted one massive payout, I guess. Hmm. I don't like that. Would be my guess. I don't like. I'm never selling my shit, and whoever gets my shit, you're not allowed to sell it either. <laughs> I'm selling the shit out of it. No way, not happening. You gotta keep it and well, cause, enjoy it. Put it in a museum or some shit. Well, her net worth leading up to this was about seventy-five million, so it's now at about uh, one hundred seventy-five million. So, yeah. but but, but yeah, now the, yeah, but now she never wrote those songs. I can just if I buy your song and then it's mine, and I go, oh, now I wrote it. Now that's my song. Well, you own the rights to it, which means you make all the money off, but you can't say that you wrote it. Sure. Well, it depends it's on your licensing you, agreement. You it. it just gives you the publishing rights to it. Yeah, it depends on the agreement. Um, I don't, does any? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to, to, to say, but I don't think you could ever be able to say, I own the rights, so therefore I wrote the songs. Sure. Well, it depends on but, what rights you own. But, yeah. Um. That, that <laughs> That'd sucks. be fucked up, eh? I remember when I wrote that song. I thought this guy John, who owns the rights, wrote the song. No, I did. Nah, according to him, Michael he Jackson. Owns it, so, fuck. Michael Jackson's <laughs> family w- went through a huge fight with Paul McCartney. Yeah, and uh, McCartney finally came out on the winning end of that one. <laughs> um, Nirvana and Courtney Love are still fighting over his stuff. Yep. I still love the fact that Michael the Michael Jackson Paul McCartney thing was so good because um Paul McCartney asked Michael Jackson for like investment opportunities and Michael Jackson's like, Well yeah, you investment. He goes, You invest in music, you know, that's that's where you make them. It's a continuous money flow. So he bought Michael Jackson's music. <laughs> I just love that. Like <laughs> it's such a dick move, but it's so perfect. It is. <laughs> so anyway, that's Stevie Nicks. I don't know why you would do that. I don't care. I don't care about Stevie Nicks, to be honest. I never yeah. did. I, I never saw why she was so special. I think most artists that people really celebrate, I don't as much. Uh, from that era, at, at, at least. Yeah. I don't um, think she was all that yeah, special. Yeah, I was never... like. I appreciate what she's done for music and all that stuff, but uh, I just personally just not – I wasn't a big fan of her music. Yeah. Uh, I'm that's like always that. how I followed about fucking Sarah McLaughlin too, so. I don't want to talk about her. <laughs> but I did have a friend who went to a party at her house where she forced everyone to listen yeah. to her own music, and that's fucking awesome. That's – Fucking cringeworthy. She so messed up. walks around her house listening to her own music. What is she, me? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm starting to like you, Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> Even though you were like the first oh. thing I think Gordon and I ever insulted on this show. Yeah. Many, many much. insults ago. 
<laughs> Many insults ago, when this was such an in, like a uh, innocent show. Yeah, <laughs> we were so young and naive then. And Gore didn't swear. <laughs> oh, we both swore. Who are we kidding? That's um, <laughs> true. <laughs> so yes, don't sell your shit, artists. Keep your stuff. Give it to your kids. Yeah, yeah. Sign that shit over. Put it in your fucking will. If you're allowed. I wonder who's out there trying to sell their shit and nobody wants it. You know, it's like <laughs> Chris and or Cross just walking around like, hey, you want to buy my shit? No, no one wants to buy your shit, Chris and or Cross. They're standing out in front of a fucking, they're standing in front of a Walmart. <laughs> Come on, man. I always have it's such. COVID, buy my music. I have such mixed emotions when I go into a pawn shop and see me, like like one of my <laughs> CDs. Wow, someone pawned me. That's offensive. <laughs> I don't like that. Can I buy me? I would really rather just have me have it now. <laughs> I did. One time when I was visiting Kelowna, I bought two CDs I'm on. That was like a long time ago when I was kid. I like, I can't believe someone fucking pawned me. I found one as far away as downtown Vancouver. I, I was on Granville in a, in a pawn shop on Granville. It was a, like a used record shop. And I found one of mine. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> So someone took it all the that way to Vancouver to get rid of it. <laughs> the thing where they moved and they opened up their suitcase, like, what the fuck is this? Oh, I'm getting rid of this shit. Yeah, I, even I used, started just using them as coasters after a while. <laughs> See, that was one of the best things about CDs. They were built-in coasters. Yeah, sure. They're great. Plastic. It was waterproof. It was great. It worked out well. Cassettes are making a comeback, I'm yeah. told. That's ridiculous. People are stupid. Ugh. Like I really I really oh, missed that stretched out terrible sound. Stupid. Um you're cutting out. Right? I mean like there. the sound quality yeah. of cassettes was horrible. Yeah, I don't get it. No. Oh. Fucking stupid. Um, um so there you go. So there's a massive there's another uh, in China Chong Peng. Um, seven, 18 people killed in a coal mining accident. Apparently, they forgot to bring the fucking canary with them because they died of carbon monoxide gas. That's usually what happens in a coal mine. Especially a Chinese one. You're just bound to die. Surprise, motherfucker. Um, are you gone? Did I just lose you? And we've lost Gord. That's fantastic. What a great... Um, this has been a really weird episode anyway. But the fact that... Oh, he's totally gone. Uh, okay, Gord is totally gone. He's completely offline. So there we have it, kids. Uh, we will get the show back on track. Thanks for uh, sticking around. Thanks for listening. Um, maybe in the next couple of days, I'll just do a quick recap of all the cool stuff that we have coming up. Because there is a lot, not the least of which is the Eric and Gord attempt to capture the record for the world's longest podcast. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get a hold of Gord here. Uh, what I'll do, I think, is I'll pause real quick and uh, not make you sit here and listen while I try to get a hold of Gordon. So, here we go. We're not. It would be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, we have an episode that does that. I don't know why. Just halfway through, it starts at the beginning again. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> I don't mind. Um. So, yeah, kids, uh, there we, we're back. I'll edit all that. I will. Ooh. I swear I will. I promise I won't. I know I won't. <laughs> um, I, I don't have a lot of podcasty stuff to talk about. This I haven't been following it. I haven't been on social media. I haven't been doing anything. I've been working and sleeping. That's all I do, except mostly not sleeping. Because I got some new recording software, and I'm trying to record a lot with it. It's expensive. Nice. And I like it. I couldn't afford it, and I yeah, don't I know how to use it. Um, but we got to get question for you. Okay, question, question away. Very quick question. So, um, 
apparently in Pakistan, they had a whole bunch of COVID patients die after their oxygen supply ran out. So okay. was it COVID that killed them, or was it <laughs> the lack of oxygen? Well, you know, if everyone wants to get real technical, I will go back to what I used to always say. It was lack of blood flow to the brain that killed them. <laughs> That's what kills yeah. everyone. <laughs> You pretty much bang on. <laughs> I know. CSI would be a very boring show if I wrote it. What killed them? <laughs> Lack of blood flow to the brain. That's what kills us all. That's right. That's that's what you die from. You don't die from anything else. It's when blood stops going to your brain, you die. That's that's how that works. So, um, did they die of COVID? Not really. Mm. If you want to be all pragmatic <laughs> about it. <laughs> I am trying to get a nurse I just thought on the that show. Was just kind of funny. I have a nurse I, I, who who I'm very close with, and I'm trying to get them on the show. They won't do the show, but I'm trying to get them to do like an off show interview with me to explain if I'm off base with my beliefs. I don't think I am about about COVID. About COVID, yeah. I, I want a nurse yeah. who's very first hand experience in it and works with the elderly in Manitoba. Um, so, you know, that's a trifecta in the COVID world because Manitoba has gone fucking crazy overboard with this shit. Yeah. Um, so I am going to try to get this person to discuss it with me and explain because they won't lie to me. They won't, they won't bullshit me. They won't give me news. They'll just tell me what's going on in their hospital. And that's really yeah. helpful. Um, but they're very concerned about their job to the point where I'm not even allowed to hint at to who it may be. No, and, and that's the thing. Like, that's the thing I don't quite understand. Why are they so afraid to allow doctors to speak and nurses? Why are they so afraid of that? Well, hmm. Because doctors and nurses won't play the political game. Well, some of them will, like the right? the, the trans and the and the. Bonnie, uh, what the fuck do we have? Bonnie, Henry, and whoever you oh, got. Yeah. Tan. Uh, Tan. <laughs> well, Tan's the Canadian one. That's national. Oh, yeah. She's Canada wide. That's right. She's Canada wide. And even I'm her, so her fucking her. speech yesterday was a little weird, too. I didn't get it. It's like, oh, well, everybody's doing what they're supposed to. That's good, but we're all still getting it, and that's bad. Like, how. Uh, God damn it, I'm not going over it again. But if the fucking masks don't... Oh, question about it. Why do the numbers keep going up if the masks say, work? How is it that when these people are all wearing masks in these old folks' homes, how is it spreading if the masks work? It, how, it makes no sense. It's impossible. But then again, I struggled to... Like, I didn't put on a mask ever at all until the very last minute where I had to... Um. Because they wouldn't let me on the bus. But how come I'm not dead? How come everybody's yeah. not dead? What, all those protesters, how come they're not dead? Mm -hmm. The rioters, the cops who dealt with the rioters, they should all be dead. Every one of them. Yep. 10% of them should be all dead. I'm pretty sure I had it twice. <laughs> in, once in February and once in, well, you guys know about the second one because I was all over the show. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, don't yeah. want to get into that. How did this turn into the fucking COVID episode? Fuck you, COVID. Um, <laughs> where were we? Doctors, COVID. COVID. Doctors, carbon. Um, <laughs> so I just yeah. Speaking just of insane. COVID, uh, because we're already very far into this show. Yes. Um, speaking of COVID, not at all. But I really got to, after two years, and we're right around the season when you and I first started discussing this. It's almost exactly two years. Um, possibly a little over two years. Mm -hmm. But the Meng Wanzhou plea agreement. Oh, my God. She may. What? She may. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinions contained within are solely those of the interviewers and interviewees and should be received as so. 
Those seeking help or advice are encouraged to obtain professional legal and medical.